dear venerable brothers and sisters, dear Dhamma friends, uh, today was so, now is the time for this Dhamma talk. Uh, to, the, to start the Dhamma talk, may you all con- consent three times is sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <coughs> Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Katanja bhikkave pachupanni sudhammi sudhanghirati Ida bikka ve asutava putu jano aria nangadasa vi aria dammi a covido aria dammi a vinito. Sapurisa nangadasa vi sapurizami a covido sapurizami a vinito. Rupang at the no samanopasati. Rupa vantangwa at tanang at the niva rupang. Rupe sua at tanang titi. Dhamma friends, for the last five days, we, uh, we have taken this particular sutta, namely the Bhaddekaratta Sutta, and in the early part, the Buddha <coughs> explained how to maintain the stream of consciousness, uh, not to uh, think about the past, and uh, uh, not to anchor behind the uh, about the future and uh, denying and finding the disadvantages uh, <coughs> his thesis is to keep it as much as possible in the present mind if you are a, a real ideal lover of the uh, solitude asking and <coughs> giving this uh, thesis and antithesis regarding this uh, solitude and the tense mind uh, today he is starting yet another side of it, specifically to the field level experiment, how to keep the present mind not to drawn into uh, a reaction in the desirable or undesirable way. So the question is Katanchabikave Pachupanne Sudamisu Sanghirati. The first part he's asking is how the mind gets drawn into uh, a reaction or kind of a commitment uh, with respect to what is seen, what is hearing, what is smelling, touching, and tasting, and thinking. And uh, that is the uninstructed commoner. So therefore the Buddha explain how that kind of a reaction happens, how that kind of a commitment happens. He says, Siddha Bhikkave Asutava Putujjano. Uninstructed, unlearned, commoner, uh, never seen any noble ones, has never, uh, he's unskilled, unskillful in the noble practices and uh, has not heard about and untrained about the skill, uh, the noble practices, as well as he has not seen uh, noble people or good, uh, true people, and he's unskilled and untrained in this kind of uh, uh, practices, namely the mindfulness or the meditation. And when that happens, whatever he is uh, to see, whatever he is to hear in this very moment, he gets entangled with the particular thing uh, seen, heard, and smell, tasted, and touch. Uh, telling this uh, this particular scene is myself. Take it as myself, or take it as this self is possession of this kind of a sceneries or scenes, or uh, as the uh, the self is in it, or uh, self as in uh, the what is seen. Whatever may be, if you are not instructed well, if you are not prepared well, uh, whatever seen, there's a kind of a attachment or uh, detachment, a kind of a reaction uh, with respect to the self. So this is the way the world is running. 
in other sense uh, it is very clearly indicated without that kind of uh, external instructions without this kind of preparation never such a commoner never such an instructed person go out of this uh, perpetual vortex never it happens that is how our our senses and this uh, external impingements and the world and the samsaric journey happens it has been well mapped no escape the just like a, a gravitational force it never allows anything to go out of this orbit and everything is pulled back into this earth but there may be the space objects that is how it happens so therefore the buddha says dwe me bhikkhave pacchaya samaditya upadaya kathame dwe parato cha ghoso ajhatna yonso manasikaro Oh, monks, for someone to have that kind of a, a radical reflection or against the grain kind of view, there's a two proximate cause. One thing is he has to listen from someone. That is the, either the Buddha or his disciple. And meanwhile, he or she should have this uh, wise reflection to accept it and grasp it digest it and to resolute faith to put into practice otherwise whatever you are going to see whatever here smell touch everything going to have an attachment without such an attachment seeing never happens hearing never happens so they are not luck by chance there is a kind of a, the propellants and kind of a drive uh, no one knows with whom agenda it is working sometimes it may be due to karmic forces or may be due to your set of values liking and disliking or your personality traits and your habitual training whatever may be Uh, you are bound to get that particular uh, sense of impingement and as i di- try to discuss uh, discuss and describe in the last few talks whenever a given situation in one phenomena there are six senses the eye the ear the nose the tongue and the body together with the mind base fighting for this fighting to get a chance or um, to get the attention of the consciousness in a given moment the eye is open and sensitivity is there and visual objects are there the ear drum is healthy and the sound waves are there and the nose is uh, intact and the uh, different smells on the taste buds in the tongue is quite vivid and living and the different tastes and the body is it's a kind of a tactile organ it is anything come in touch it it has its own sensitivity to touch and the mind is always with its own pet ideas and philosophizing be given that there are six sense doors and six impingements which one going to take the priority is a, is a kind of a luck by chance appear to be because it is impromptu it is quite electric when we were in the discussion in my early mid-teen classes one person came out with a example just to uh, grasp it so the example it says if there is one minister having six departments and minister has minister's private secretary a beautiful young girl each and every department has a, the departmental permanent secretary so each and every secretary has to come and report uh, to that secretary 
and she is decoding all the information and put it in a very nice organized manner so when the minister comes uh, everything at her fingertip she can uh, brief the minister so is she very efficient so next day morning whenever the six departmental uh, permanent secretaries to start the work each and every one has to go to that secretary the ministerial uh, private secretary and to get his or the his particular file and they are waiting at the desk six people and the, everyone is fighting to get the attention of that beautiful girl and she is the one ultimately deciding which one's request should be considered first and the second kind of priority so being there is only one private secretary each and every one has to wait to for their own chance like as the consciousness is remaining whether it is to become eye consciousness or ear consciousness or uh, smelling tasting touching or merely uh, mind consciousness it is undecided is anything can happen it is so impromptu the buddha says the the speed it's a uh, quick nature very difficult to give even uh, an example so whenever the the visual uh, uh, that called the uh, shapes and the manners visual objects come unless otherwise the mind the the chakku vinyana the consciousness of the eye consciousness to become uh, available at the eye the seeing never happens in the other other in on the other way if the consciousness is going to engage in as the eye consciousness at that time the sensitivity of the eye and the visual objects come together and the seeing happens so chakkuncha paticca rupeja uppachati chakku vinyana paticca rupa paticca rupa means it's a dependent one eye is i sensitivity is there and the impingements come the visual object the uh, seeing seeing thing happens and uh, immediately the consciousness has to come and support it when there is these three go together we call contact and then that particular person become a seer it is happening so swiftly and uh, coincidentally and concurrently there's another thing happen in that particular moment there are as some sounds come and striking on the ear drums but they become invalid they never become uh, perceivable because consciousness is engaged now with the eye so whatever the smell coming whatever the taste coming whatever the uh, touch or thinking happens they never become valid they then and there they drops because consciousness is fully engaged being so is simply we can say out of six sense organs five are already enlightened only one is the one get engaged and you know if you know it you can claim now already you are half enlightened of course it is more than half it is now uh, five is five out of six but only thing is you don't know because so much you are attracted to what is you are seeing it is coming it is the seeing happen after the priority it take the priority so much so you attracted to what you are observing or distracted or hate so therefore by selecting the seeing as such or try to be a seer you reject these five and therefore we out of these five no kilesas no defilements happens but there is no no one to uh, entertain it or understand it because mind is so engaged 
in seeing and because the particular person is not well instructed, not maintain mindfulness and the concentration, never heard about any enlightened being, not heard about enlightened beings teaching and never given a try. Never seen a, a noble friend or a true man, never heard about this and never tried. Under such circumstances, whatever the, the organ going to get the priority of the attention of the consciousness, all the, it is strong enough to uh, dominate the others. In agriculture, we are being taught in the dicotyledon plants, uh, there is an uh, epical medicine, that is the, the tip, which is coming faster when that is growing, for example, uh, a plant of chili, uh, the epical medicine is very heavy, very, very active, that uh, the, it is uh, growing very fast, and below that there are a lot of medicines which also can make other shoots. But the epical medicine is always creating an enzyme dominating all the other uh, medicines. They never allow to grow. It is called uh, epical dominancy. Once you tip off the tip, all the others are going to grow. It's a highly capitalistic system. Highly capitalistic system, that is how the organs are working. Whatever may be going to take the upper hand, it is overpowering all the others. So much of the attraction it develops to the what is seeing, or sometimes kind of a hatred, overpowering, and they are, that is the point where you don't know you are a seer. You fail to note that I am a seer, or you don't fail to note I am a hearer. In with respect to this. Uh, given this panoramic situation, the Buddha says, Katancha bhikkave pachupannesu dhammesu asanghirati. If this is the case of monks, how one will not get drawn into the phenomena happening under very nose? He says here, here uh, Sutava Arya Savako, the person who is practicing, and well learned, and Aryananda Savi Aryadami Kovidu Aryadami Suvinito. He has seen noble people, he has listened to noble people, and he has given try. For example, uh, in sitting meditation, he closed his eyes, go to a silent place, and uh, don't enter in smelling and touching, uh, the tasting, and try to focus only one uh, one faculty the contact and see how when the breath happens, is the thought going to arise, how the mind is going to give the priority to the thought or the breath. Or meanwhile the sound happens or pain happens, how this is happening, how that experiment is happening under laboratory condition or with uh, limited uh, the fixing lot of lot of variables. So they are at the beginning he complained, telling when I am uh, sitting and completely silently fall and calm and collected on the bridge, someone is coughing and then the, my attention broken. Or oh, the pain happens, attention broken. Or oh, thought happens. Thinking that everything is already given and provided and feel uh, the practitioner himself or herself as very innocent. Outside things are the one going and disturbing. But instead the Buddha said that is not the case. It is your choice to leave aside the primary object and jump into the sound or jump into the thought or jump into the pain. And ultimately you attribute wrongly, you uh, accuse the outside source. That has to be challenged. But still on the humanistic ground, on the ethical grounds, you have to understand, or we have to understand, if that particular person is very weak in mindfulness and the concentration, definitely he or she can't understand what is happening. Therefore, this accusation outwardly is natural. 
So therefore, when we are organizing a meditation center, when we are organizing a meditation hall, when we are organizing a group meditation, we give the most conducive conditions so that one can gain the basic mindfulness and the concentration. When it is happening, when it's growing, when it's maturing, uh, slowly, slowly these sounds and the pains and the thoughts are the real testing equipments. And one day, he or she can come up to a certain level that little, midst of little bit of sounds and pain and thoughts, still it is possible to keep the track with the breath or it is my prime duty to keep the track with the breath in midst of all kind of things. Whenever that happens, whenever that experience, whenever that uh, becomes possible, that is the way our the resistance, our uh, holding capacity increases. And then when you go to the walking meditation, eyes are open and they are, uh, it's a part and parcel of the exercise. And there you have to uh, apply, apply this everything. And still when you go to the day-to-day activities, there are no conditional conditions, specifically at the household situation. And they are, this is the only thing you have to understand. Mind is such, specifically the untrained mind is such, it is always attracted to the highest defilement. The which sense, which sense was impingement going to give the highest defilement, that take the upper hand, not only that, it cut off and dominate all the other parts. And therefore the, the main, uh, how do you call that, the creator, the main uh, person responsible, if at all, defilements. So therefore in uh, Buridhatta Jataka, the Jataka story of the Buddha to be, he is analyzing this situation, if at all there is a creator, his creation is nothing but suffering. Therefore, the best name is not the creator. He must be recognized or named as a destructor. Everything created is a suffering. And it is nothing to be personalized according to the teaching of the Buddha. But even to be personalized, he must be known as Vinasaka, not as the uh, creator. There you can understand our whole day-to-day affairs and one seeing to hearing, hearing to other, everything happening according to the amount of defilements we are going to get. That is the one selecting the priority. So you must be really ready to take this challenge. And when and where seeing, hearing, smelling happens, you must not hesitate to confront it. You must not think about that a completely pure stream of consciousness, free of defilement and to be a perfect meditator. It never happens. Only you can understand is how the mechanism happening, what is the formula, what is the circuit it is working, and who select the priority, what is the agenda of this mind. I would like to quote yet another sutta, to highlight this point, when you go to the Sangyutta Nikaya, there is one particular sutta as Malunke Buddha Sutta. And uh, Malunke Buddha is a person ordained elderly and uh, very inclined to the solitude and kind of thing. He go to the Buddha and say, Bhante, I got the ordination and everything. Now my idea is to go to your secluded place and entertain solitude. So please give me a... Uh, Instruction, meditation instruction. At the beginning, the Buddha is rebuking and telling that I have already given, but still individually come in and asking as if I am holding something. I have nothing to hold. I have already given everything like. But anyway, start uh, dialogue. He says, the Buddha is asking, Yang kincharupang napasati napasisanti uh, there is a one kind of a visual object you have never seen. And for the moment also you are not 
seeing it. You are not looking at also and you are not bound to look at in future also. Under such circumstances, can that visual object develop kind of a desire or attachment or any defilement? Then the Manukya Buddha says no. Na pasati na pasisanti na adittang aditta bubbang na pasati na pasisanti. Never seen, not seeing now, not looking at now. It is not. There is no. There is a fear ground that not going to look in future also. Under such circumstances, all these rupas or the materiality in the the visual objects never going to give the defilement. So yesterday there was a question, is there any sankharas in the trees and the rocks? It becomes sankhara once it's contacted your senses here and now. Till that it come and contact or, or, or impinge or avenue, they are not creating any defilements, any pemangwa, chandangwa, that means attachment or desire or Nothing happens. So that means the poor people has little saying on the matter are better off. They have no contact with them. They are not contacting presently. They have no intentional one. In future also they are for But those who feel, they who believe that I have uh, to approach to so much of visual objects, so much of sounds and so much of smells and so much of taste and so much of luxuries, there are a huge amount of space to develop the desire and the defilements. So the Dinda Malunke Buddha, the Buddha is asking that the kind of a sound you have never heard, you are not hearing, you are not listening, it is bound to get not listening in future also. Under such circumstances, will there be any kind of a desire kind of thing? Then he says no. And the uh, dialogue is going on. Any smell, any taste, any luxuries, touch, or any thinking, as far as there is not contacting either past or future, no chances for defilements. This is also relieving huge amount of pressure. And uh, so the Buddha says, whatever under your very nose here and now, that is the what creating defilement. And there are also, there are six avenues, seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting and thinking. Out of these six, only one is dominating. When it is dominating, it is do away with all the five. So therefore, out of this present context also, five out of six, not creating any defilement. So if you can keep the touch, keep your finger in the particular one now creating defilement, that's all, that's it. Then you call the enlightened. So that is how the mindfulness come into the, the real focus. Uh, for that, when you are in the day-to-day -day activities, you must understand even you are end out with five faculties, even though it is you are fully rich with the uh, five, imp six impingements, nothing to worry, nothing to bother about, all kind of thing. You mind your own business. Keep the eye, keep the finger Keep the attention to the what is exactly happening now. And all the others, past and the future, not contacting, also can create problems only by coming into the present moment. Thinking happens only in the present moment, even though you are thinking about the past and the future. Even if you are thinking about something not in front of you, that thinking happens in very moment. Soon the past thing come into the memory, your attention or your mindset feel like you are in the past, but never. Past is already gone. And even if you are planning for the future, it's a just a dream, it's a just a projection. But so you are so engaged thinking that I am projecting is me, it is mine, it is myself. 
and uh, this form, this feeling, everything considered as either me or mine or for myself or self as form, this all kind of thing. So therefore, if you can keep the, the track with the present moment and to pinpoint whether you are a seer or hearer or person smelling or touching, tasting or touching, that very understanding is a real sharp, helpful manner, helpful way you to see how swiftly the mind is changing. And they are running, the priority is selected by uh, the amount of defilements, amount of magnetizing power, amount of uh, desire or hatred. Sanghirati means uh, the, you are movable, shakeable, reacting, committing. Asanghirati means knowing that you try to keep the mind immovable and on a non-reactional way, unassuming way, that's the gist of the teaching of the Buddha. That's the gist of the teaching of the noble one or the true man. Unless otherwise you give a try under the laboratory conditions, go to a meditation center, close your five out of six uh, uh, senses and keep attention only one, and one. whenever you become successful there, then only you can diversify it in the walking and sitting meditation, sorry, sitting and day, walking and day-to-day -day activity. There you can understand how the, the swift nature of the, uh, the affairs. So understanding this, uh, the dialogue, the Mahalunke Buddha, he says, Bhante, I would like to repeat the message I got so that you can correct me if I am wrong. He says, Rupandiswa sati mutta pianimittam manasikaroti. He says, a person, uninstructed commoner, see, uh, they happen to see a uh, visual object. And no mindfully. And mindfully happen to see a visual object. Rupandiswa sati mutta. Sati mutta means absent, uh, the unmindful. Pianimittam manasikaroti. The, whenever these uh, visual objects come and impinge, rather than what is impinging, he entertain what he wish to see. In the Western language, they say, what you see, that you are. They come and, of course, it gives a chance for you to bring the consciousness to the eye, but the visual object itself never go in, only the image goes, that image is decoded and go to the, the faculty where the brain is working, there it manifest and manipulate and tell you this is what you are seeing. And that is what is going to the memory. And that is what you either make uh, desirability or undesirability. As on the way we have mentioned, that not all the time we see that is existing. All the time what we see is not existing. Just like in the case of Mirage, or just like the case of a Scarecrow, or <coughs> in a dream, or when you see our own image in the mirror. The classic example is, the eye is the one looking at the whole thing in the world, but I can't see itself. To see the eye, we have to have a mirror. Even the eye, you have the blind spot. Whenever something has fallen into the a blind spot, that is also not you can see. So therefore, this, uh, this the particular crack in this whole map or whole the circuit uh, indicates... What you see is not what you ask, uh, what is existing. The existing thing you can't see, that is why Buddha says the main aim of this Vipassana meditation is to see things as they are. In order to not to give the real picture, there are a lot of other uh, things we can explain through physics also happening. In the physics also, whenever you are to see particles in a microscope, that is not perceivable by your naked eye. The particle has to come into a 
or even before the particle, there are some energies, energy waves. Sometimes it's maintained, known as the the M theory or string theory or fabrications uh, like waves. And when they come up to a conglomeration as quantum, either it can be a particle or again dissolve back to the energies depending on the your consciousness. Whenever the consciousness presence, the energy, the quantum can collapse into particle. And the other way around. Once the particle happens, the particle has to come together to a certain configuration to make an atom. You can't see it. A huge amount of atoms has to come together to sometimes make a molecule. And then when the molecule happens to come into a agglomeration, whenever it is perceivable, uh, uncalculable amount of particles are there. So this agglomeration is the one makes something perceivable. When you dissolve into the individual like, uh, uh, ingredients or particles, you can't see it. So there's a huge uh, amount, huge uh, agglomeration we consider as one unit. That what unit decided by you have a level of perception. So when that game come, get, come together, uh, we say it's a man, may, may, woman, tree, or plant, or whatever may be, then only we can put a label. And that is how this language and uh, everything happen. So therefore, a real thing, when you go deep into, once you penetrate it, it is so quickly subject to transference, transformation. The energies, of course, there is no shape, no manner, no gravity. Even if you look from the gross agglomerated thing and go into the reductionist way, to small parts, so much of differences happen. So therefore, whatever we uh, we seeing in this common sense is not the things really they are. So there you have to penetrate into. You can't penetrate because your attachment, because of your your hatred. So therefore, your uh, observation stop at the superficial level, and it is enough to suppress the other senses. So you get attach into that is called sanghirati, you react to that particular superficial super face value. That is how our sansaric journey, our memory, our perception, our sankhara, our consciousness, feelings and meta matter is happening. So therefore whenever you are to see something without mindfulness, Rupandiswa Sati Mutta, Pyani Mitta Manasikaroti, you can imagine anything out of anything. Whatever you see indicates your mood. If you are in a beautiful mood, whatever you see is beautiful. We are in a very bad mood, anything you see appears cumbersome and difficult and painful. So therefore, uninstructed way, you think that external visual object is making your mind beautiful or sad. But the Buddha is trying to say, your mind is the one projecting it. That projection based on your mood. And uh, that is why in the quantum physics, they indicate wherever you go, there you are. Whatever you see, that you are. But never that happens for the uninstructed person or un person have no no experiences. So therefore Sarata Chitto Vedeti. Whatever you painted upon that uh, the thing you have seen, you have a kind of a attachment because it is your own baby, your own creation. So therefore Sarata Chitto Vedeti, Tancha Ajosa Chittati and you enter into that, claim this is me and this is mine and this is myself, or in this visual object, the self is there, or self is something with this visual shape, all the kind of thing happens. Tassavaddati Vedana, 
aneka rupa sambhava. So then you try to entertain, this is a pleasurable, this is not pleasurable, this is no pain, no pleasure. And then accordingly, uh, different diversification of tasting going to happen. Ajosa viho, apijja vihe sahava, chittama supahanyati. So then you keep on attack, attachment to that and mind becomes so agitated mind becomes so engaged and mind becomes so torturing mind becomes so uh, warmed up and therefore uh, you claim by looking longer time you become frustrated you become tired it's very very common when you are looking at the television when you are looking at the computer screen how much difficult your eyes are so that is how it happened. Evang achinato dukha dukhaan arani bhanacha santike. That is how you create so much of suffering. So you are far away from the Nibbana. This is the way the Malunke Buddha is explaining to the Buddha for the correction. And instead, naso rajyatu rupesu rupandiswa patisato. Instead, the instructed, prepared person never try to entertain or try to make desire, whenever seeing happen, instead try to see, now I am a seer. If at all defilement is going to happen, now it is happening through the eye door. This is what the, the meditator is supposed to do. Naso rajyatu rupe, so he is not take delight of the shapes and the manner and the uh, tiny details of the thing happen to see, instead going to understand out of six senses, now I is the one uh, going to be vulnerable. Viratta uh, chitto vedeti. Of course, some uh, pleasure or pain arises, but no, this is happening due to the momentum, but you never claim it. You never going to commit that I am the person be happy, or this is what my, my, my soul, myself, or it's mine, but try to withdraw it because otherwise, you know, the stream of consciousness will become defiled. Therefore, virata chitta vedati, tancha na josa tittati. Not trying to claim that what I see is me or mine or myself. This is how you're going to uh, get the distance. When and where seeing happens because of the mindfulness. So mindfulness is stop at that level, never proliferate upon what you have seen. That is exactly the the famous instruction to the bar here. You see and uh, in naturally, in nature, it stops there. So therefore you must train to see and stop at that level. Don't try to make a proliferation, commentaries and kind of thing. For example, when a camera shot or a video is going to snap and take a photo, it has no idea whether it's a male or female, red or yellow. So therefore the camera never get defiled. Even if it's a bad thing. As far as the sounds are concerned, these machines are recording, they have no sense. They stop at that level. The difference between this recording machine and our ear is, whenever it comes, we interpret it. We have our, have our analysis, commentaries. So when that happens, they are going according to your likings and dislikings. They are going to according to your personality trait, according to karmic forces. So therefore, when two people listen to the same, get different impressions. When two people are going to see one single object, uh, the diversification happens because of your coloration. They are, of course, the sound or the visual objects or the light perception coming from out, whenever the contact happens, your mind ooze or pour, add some value to what that is 
that is to what you have seen what you have heard and your addition your your the contribution is so innate so personal no more you see the thing as such what you see your own projection so of course it is very lively it is it is very uh, connected in it so when you are in the meditation sometimes you hear sounds you visualize things are more vivid it's a very attra- very appealing very innate and you think it has i have the telepathic connection i see this very vivid way and this and kind of thing but you don't know you are seeing only your own mind it's a projection of your own mind and uh, your interpretation is of course bias because that such a thing to happen you must be far and far and far away from the mindfulness if you are mindful from the first second wandering thought moments time you know you are off the track but you are keep on uh, how do you call the con- keep on commenting because of your lack of mindfulness so therefore naso rajyatu rupetu rupan diswa patisato never uh, entertain what you have seen instead try to be mindful so to say that i am a seer viratta chitto vedeji at a distance get a distance tancha na josa chitta ji never going to enter into it you know this is what it happened yata sa pasato rupan sevato chapi vedana and as such circumstance of course that particular person is observing that particular object of course his mind has some notion whether it is pleasurable or not or painful the feelings there the material the corporeality is there matter is there but no attachment happens no claim in this i see this is what i see is mine this is my, me myself the detachment happen therefore the fading of going to happen this is the what whenever you are directly observing the breath slowly slowly breath become dull and it become not attractive and it become the in breath and out breath equal and in that be like something not encouraging so this is a very good sign of course from the satipatthana point of view but our rational mind says the object become pale object becomes very dull and monotonous and boring and sleepy and you feel uncertain whether you are progressing or not entertaining doubts so even though it is a sign of uh, wear and tear and the discoloration so therefore whenever the sansara or this uh, perpetual trip in the death and the rebirth happens attachment is there it's very colorful very uh, multiple multivarious when the nibbana comes to be whenever the mindfulness is going there whatever the object you are going to focus penetrating they become fading off viraga viraj virajati viragati vimuchati ranjana means you get the attra- the, the multicolored attachment and the uh, nirodha means fading off so they are if you are to really support or really help or promote or really love of this idea of solitude this khiyati or viranjati or nirodhati these are the things to be appreciated for that you have to associate noble people and listen to their dhamma and uh, train yourself as much as possible or oh, associate noble people listen to their dhamma and give a trial as much as possible so little by little you can understand how this uh, thing gather the momentum either in the positive way or negative way yonisu manasikara or ayonisu manasikara yonisu manasikara means even though it is becoming pale even though become it is boring even though it is becoming dull you understand it is a sign of development of mindfulness 
there's a kind of a concentration also there. It is a, a way leading to the truth of suffering. But instead, if you are so arrogant, do no, don't have any kind of patience, no re- resistance, you are always asking multivarious entertainment and you are changing object to object, posture to posture. So that is the way you keep on uh, adding these uh, defilements. So the from the, view, uh, the point of view of the Buddha, he says, Nate kama yani chitrani loke. He says this sensuous pleasure is not in the, the multivarious forms in the world. Nate kama yani chitrani loke. The varietal, veracity and the multiple thing is not the real uh, sensuous pleasure, Sankappa Rago Purishasa Kamo. Each and every one love one's own pet ideas, one's own likings and dislikings, one's own personality traits. So, Titteva Chitran Tateva Loke, let the, the varietal entertainment and different colors and shapes, then in the world as such, but the real heroic person try to control one's own the sensuous desire, which is uh, coming from in to out. So this is very difficult unless otherwise you are attentive listening and give a real uh, kind of a trial. When you are doing, little by little you can understand, amidst of all the provoking things, amidst of all multivariate tasks, if your mind is trained, not to go by the attachment, but to be aware that I am now a seer, I am a listener, I am a tasting person, I am a uh, the person smelling or touching. That very understanding, that very labeling is a very, very important issue in the day-to-day activities. So therefore, whenever the multitasking question happens, you have to, when and where possible, if you can note it is seeing, 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 or hearing, 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 or smelling, 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 tasting, tasting, touching, touching. Best thing is, very easily you can understand, when you are going to note, when and where you are going to eat, more the noting happens, you feel like not to eat too much. Your eating will be cut short sometimes. Therefore, Masi Saido, he says, some elderly people come to the meditation centers, they listen this to this marvelous Dhamma, and they give a full trial, and they are going to note when and, when they are, when and where they are going to eat. And few morsels time, they leave aside and get up and go. And he says, don't do it, because... This is due to the coloration of your mind. For meditation, you have to have to have a certain amount of food. Young young people don't care; they eat. But the old people, they have developed repulsivity so much, and they come into the dhamma very late time. So if they wanted to have an acceleration. Ultimately, he says, due to the lack of food, they ultimately fallen into sick. So, knowing that. You have to understand when and where this noting happens, a uh, kind of a detachment happens. And that noting also, there are some methods to intensify. For example, in seeing, if you are a mature person, just a beginner, you uh, notice rupiah, rupiah, that means a visual objects. That's what you call that is existing in the outside. You know, it has a, a, a material, a vision. When and where you become skillful, you can note it as seeing, seeing, seeing. Now you can bring the attention to your eye consciousness level. And when you come to the seeing, equally you come from to the sounds to the listening and to the food to the tasting, and tactile object to the contact, you find there's a kind of a similarity. 
whether you are seeing or hearing or smelling, uh, it is happening within your head. Everything comes to the the mind. Ultimately, they can still reduce knowing, 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 knowing. Knowing is a very generic term. Can take care about whether it's seeing or smelling or whatever maybe. Uh, so slowly, slowly it is uh, withdrawn from the external world to the uh, sensitivity level and then back to the hard core of the consciousness. So more and more you apply this is the best way or the only way to restrain your faculties. More you become intelligent, more you become skillful in this understanding of the mechanism, naturally the restrainment of the faculties happens. So therefore the Buddha says, Sila vato panya, panya vato sila. Those who have only the on, those who have the wisdom only can have a hope on the moral training, because this restraining of the faculty is the proximate cause for the moral restrainment, the sila. So those who have no wisdom, no hope regarding restraining of the faculties. Whenever the, you are going to restrain the faculties, mind is more and more mindful. You get enough time, you have enough space to keep the stream of consciousness unpolluted, undefiled. Uh, so reciprocal, uh, inter the hand in hand, progress going to start. Whether you are in a monastery or whether you are a monk, or whether you are a nun, or any bhikkhuni, it doesn't matter. Whenever the, the wisdom and the moral restrainment, once that momentum is going to happen, you see it is a challenge. Immaterial whether, of whether you are in the household, or in the meditation center, or whether it's a walking meditation, or in city. At that time, whatever the uh, different... Uh, multivarious inputs, impeachments happens, your mind becomes so sharp with the mindfulness, when and where it happens, you just note it. Just mere noticing cut off so much of proliferation of defilements. So it happens in the in the sitting meditation, but when you go there, that is how the Bahia got the gist of the idea. The Buddha told, Buddha mentioned, Dite Dita Matamba so, uh, restrain so that to stop seeing at mere seeing. And when it is happening, you are not assuming by the visual objects, or you are not assuming yourself by the sensitivity of the eye, and in between the consciousness, that is also what you are disclaiming. And then, that is the end of the suffering. Even in the Kalakarama Sutta, the Buddha says, Ditta dattabhangna manyati, aditta manyati, dattaram manyati, dattabhangna manyati. The Buddha says out of his omniscient knowledge, he says whenever you see something, there's nothing more to see beyond that you have seen. That's it. And you must not think, I should not have seen it. That is not none of your business. And you must not assume that I am the person who has seen, dattarang. And that tabang, he, you must not assume there's such a thing. I have to see there's no such a thing in the world. To start the mindfulness and to grow, available thing is quite enough. So you have nothing to plan that I have to go to that place or that time or nothing. In the present moment, what is happening is the source of suffering, is the way out of suffering too. That is through the mindfulness, be aware that the past and the future is nothing but dreams. And what you are not seeing, not hearing, also not the cause of suffering. So whatever happening, if you can keep it here and now, first you will understand is the mechanism, how the defilements come then and there. So when that kind of uh, is sharp, and very vivid kind of explanation happens. The commentary on exegesis says you have to see three lives for your 
the ignorance and for your formations and the consciousness of the past life. In this life from the uh, consciousness to the, uh, up to the birth, next birth and from the next birth on to the next life. So that was the understanding that uh, to understand the whole picture you have to go, uh, you have to have a, a time-wise chronological three lives. But when you are come to this Rupandisa, uh, Sati, Mutta, Piyanimitta, Manishikaroti, then and there you can understand the accumulation of the or creation of the suffering as well as the cessation of the very mechanism is un- happening under your very nose. But for that you can't do it overnight. You can't do it by single listening of talks. Uh, you have to keep on practicing. So then one will come and ask if it is so how that Bahya Dharachuriya came out and all, all of a sudden come into the understanding. That is because of the momentum. This is more case of the accumulation of the past. Ultimately, um, the thing happens or, or electric thing or impromptu thing happen all of a sudden, uh, that's so solving the problem. Not only that, even whether you are not developing so much of steadfast mindfulness and there's so much of momentary concentration, you are, you are relieving so much of worries about the regret regarding the past. It is just a mere defilement. Never constructive. And for the future projections and the excitements, they are really disturbing you. Not only that, you are disturbing the people right around too. And within the present moment too, the attachment or detachment happened too. The particular thing happening now, whether you are seeing or hearing, what you, you have to isolate it. To be isolated, the second person is not involved. And the visual object or external objects, immaterial, you have to be aware. So therefore you are free, whether you are seeing auspicious thing or not. You have to mere understand, you are seeing. The, its value, whether it's auspicious or not, whether good or bad, it is nothing but your projection. So there's a, there's a one sect in the Mahayana, they call Vinyati Matrata Siddhi. Sometimes it is called that uh, Yoga Chara. It is the whole world is nothing but your projection. So you are fully responsible to the world you have projected. So therefore don't fight with it. Accept that it's yours and try to be with it. And understand next moment will be another one. Next moment another one. So when that happens you see the, the mind is such a magician, it can create so much. So the Buddha says, uh, Rupang, the Pena Pindupama Rupang, uh, the, the materiality is just like a, a form, bubbles. And the Bubulupama Vedana, the feeling is just like a water bubble. And uh, perception is like a mirage. And the uh, formations, volitional formation is like a, a trunk of a banana tree. And the mind is like a magic, magician. So if you wish to see the magics, you have to go in front of the magician. You have to pay. And he will show you. But if you can go behind the magician, you can see real magic. How much... Uh, a tricky thing he is doing in order to make the people uh, completely camouflaged. So here the observer, the magician and the band behind the magician also exactly the same when and where you be here, now I am. And there you must have well prepared, well, how do you call educated or well taught and one moment all of a sudden, you can cut through, you can see it, and that is enough. That, that onward, your whole observation and your attitude to the life can be easily, easy to reshuffle, and that has to go a long way, therefore real meditation or real 
a change or real lasting change happen not basically in the sitting meditation. It is happening in the day-to-day activities. Even though we are going to train in sitting meditation and the walking meditation, and these are the laboratory experiments and the research center experiment. But at the country level, experiment is the what happening in the day-to-day activities. So challenges happening in the day-to-day activities, a real measurement, a real indicator, how much you are mindful. More and more you become mindful, you have become independent of the, uh, the people right out and the multitasking and the amount of defilements and the amount of likings and disliking, amount of personalities you have, everything will become a, a subject matter for you to understand the way you understand it, not never limited to your own. This is how you understand the human mind. This is common for, it's applicable for whole cross-sectional. All human beings are working in this way. So therefore, once you understood, easy for you to uh, be loving, develop loving kindness, the compassion to the other people, and the sympathetic joy, and at last, uh, to be equanimous. So once that uh, mindfulness or, or inside meditation come up to the maturity, uh, you may find very easy to do these four sublime meditations. Some people go through the sublime meditation to the vipassana, but vipassana also ultimately give a broader way. That is why Buddha says, if you control yourself, if you restrain yourself, you are, you are, if you are protecting yourself, you are protecting others. If you are protecting others, uh, naturally you are being protected. So in the vipassana, uh, starting from very little tiny drop, and ultimately spreading like anything. So patiently you have to uh, give the condition, condition for this plant to grow. So when it is growing, uh, you never see or you never feel that Buddha was a some person 2,600 years ago and he is in the another continent. But when the Dhamma comes, when the Dhamma is becoming lively, uh, that is the way you have to see the Buddha. Of course, it is not the Gautam, the Buddha, you are going to see. You are seeing your own Buddha within you. So, when and where you are not mindful, uh, you, are is, you are becoming a, a volunteer army soldier of the Mara. So, therefore, understanding that, don't try to take that position and amidst of all that of racket to be mindful and then ultimately uh, the real solitude or real freedom is not far away so therefore you become independent as well as uh, self-sufficient contented so wherever you go you can have it so therefore you have to take little time and train these uh, small, small, uh, how do you call, instruments, and up to the, the peak event, when that happens, uh, the solitude and other things, and the freedom, uh, you can understand it's a, it's a highest well-being, you can think about yourself, and the highest compassionate compassion you can uh, deliver to yourself, and don't think that we can gain it from outside. And don't think that we can share with the outside. Each and everyone has to take the responsibility. In that respect, I hope today the Dhamma Talk also will be helpful for you to uh, improve and get the self-confidence. Thank you very much for listening.